So when they come into your class tomorrow, your students, the first thing probably that they're going to notice that's different is this blackboard that you've spent some time on. I guess a lot of people don't these days know who Beowulf was or why kids would be learning about Beowulf in the middle of Central Australia. Oh, it's a good story. I mean, um, Steiner education is also about recapitulating a lot of what the Western inheritance actually is. And in that sense, we do give them a lot of food that comes from our inheritance. And that doesn't mean to say that we don't have uh, stuff dealing with Aboriginal stuff or stuff in the locally here, because we cover that as well. That's part of our charter. But we unashamedly also talk about Western civilization and its journey, especially with the language story. And if you look at uh, class four, usually the child turning nine and a half to ten in class four, um, you have what we call the North stories, and they're done exactly to meet the child. Uh, the ten-year-old child is what we call the trickster age. Just, uh, they've come out of their bubble. Um, they start to separate from you, from me, from any form of, sort of um, uh, authorship or authority or control and they're starting to question for the first time. And they start to see chinks in the armour, which is somewhat sobering as, a, as an educator that these children who looked up to you so wonderfully are then starting to say, well, well I think we have got another take on this guy. And it's good, because as a teacher you have to grow to meet that expectation as well. And that's one thing about this form of education as you go through. Um, you do change, because you have to. The children are changing. I've stayed with this group for three years and I've stayed together for another three years and that's basically that whole journey is actually seeing a development and a growth for the teacher as well as the child. Now, why Beowulf? Well, the Norse stories we cover a lot in class four and we've gone through the whole Norse stories from basically the start of the world tree, Yggdrasil, um, all the way through to Ragnarok as the death of the, do the gods. This is another story and it was the first story that was written in Anglo-Saxon um, that really was the start of English language, Beowulf. So it's a story that goes from the 8th to the 10th century. We're not really sure when it was codified. But um, as a story, this is about a hero. And the eight, oh, sorry, the 9 to 10 year old child is very much wanting a hero-like figure. They see themselves as a hero-like figure as well. And this is a fellow who's take Beowulf who actually takes on a huge amount of responsibility. And he goes out and actually conquers something. Now the analogy is also, it's about Grendel and it's about a dragon and it's um, about the monsters that he actually slays. But we're talking about metaphor as well. We're talking about slaying the, the monster or the actual dragon inside. So it's that, almost that Janus-like figure of as above, so below, or inside and outside reflecting the same thing. And in a sense, with a story like this, the children are being met full on with something. I mean, it's, uh, we're talking about someone here with the full armour, um, they've got the shield, um, they've got the boat here tying with the whole idea of actually travel, about journeying, about coming to actually meet something. And it was certainly about meeting something greater than yourself, which actually feeds into the class 4 age, age child. And strong work, I mean, we've left the fairy world behind. And we're going to something now a little bit more closer to our own subconsciousness, but not quite. It's still tied up with mythology. Although the story of Beowulf is actually a historical sort of figure, somewhere within the, street, the Swedish and the Danish sort of psyche. But we haven't quite met history yet. We do that in a bit of half a year's time. And we start looking at the epochs as meeting another child's needs. So. How long does it take you to do a blackboard? Uh, well... Well, the, the idea is in gestation for maybe half a year, probably even longer. Um, and I'm thinking about what's coming up, because with your planning, I've already planned at the start of the year the whole curve, what I'm going to take. But probably from about um, June, July onwards, I start to really start to read about this, like the reading Seamus Heaney's famous um, adaptation of the original Anglo-Saxon, uh, in the common vernacular that we can actually understand. So I start reading up about it, read about other people's thoughts on the story, what side idea behind the, stay, the year 10 child and what do they need, and what this sort of uh, story can perhaps give to them. So I read quite widely. Then a picture starts to come into my head, and I doodle and I draw, and I just leave it, I leave it be for maybe a month or so. And um, about six weeks ago, I started actually sketch out an idea that, okay, I know what I want. And basically here, we've got the hero here, with his shield, he's protected by something, but he's certainly there. 
Uh, you've actually got here like a drinking horn, the figure. It's quite a strong part of actually the culture of the Norse. Um, here you have the boat actually coming across the water. It's a dragon ship coming across the... and they're a seafaring nation. On the other side here we've got a door. And this is a large door which leads into the hall where Hothgar, who is Beowulf's um, uncle, um, he invited a Beowulf to come over and actually help slay the dragon Grendel. So inside this door is where all the actual warriors would be actually sitting and dining and reciting their stories and telling the stories who and what they are.